We've been waiting for this moment for 30 rounds. The championship game, Matthew Tunnicliffe versus Ben Schoenbrunn. We are ready to go. Players are seated and ready. So we're going to cut right to the game. $10,000 for the winner. Second place, $3,500. Um, and it's uh, Ben up first. Uh, he's drawn his seven tiles. And uh, we're going to see some excellent Scrabble one way or another. Both of these players have been top-notch and deserve to be in these seats. Yeah, wow. So uh, not the best opening pull for Ben here. A-E-G-K-L-O-W. Uh, he's got the option to play Gauk, G-O-W-K. Uh, it looks like he sees another word as well. This is one that's new to me, as I don't know a lot of Collins, but it looks like Quella, K-W-E-L-A, is going to come down. That's a great play. Scores a lot of points. Also potentially could have played Kogals, K-O-G-A-L there. Um, that would clear up the rack. I think a little bit better. So scoring a little bit more now at the sacrifice of his leave, holding G-O instead of E-W. But uh, I think both of those are very reasonable plays. And we're off to the race is 34 points for Ben Schoenbrunn in this championship game. And Matthew to respond, uh, he's going to do so very quickly uh, as, I don't know, uh, Uprutal is what's coming down. A-O-O-P-R-T-U. Wow, so Matthew almost instantly playing this bingo as he gets exactly the floater he needed. And in hindsight, Kogal would have given him up Rudel one space over to the side, a devastating bingo down to the, the triple. So interesting uh, start. Ben can't be happy to get bingoed on on turn one, but he's just got to shake it off and respond as best he can. G-I-I. N-O-R-X on his rack. And I'm seeing immediately opportunities for an X-bomb, as we call them, X-I-O-X -X and O-I, holding the nice, solid G-I-N-O-R leave. He'd like, certainly, to address that U in the triple line, and yet I'm not seeing any plays that do that. Sean, are you noticing one? No, and I think that this play is fairly straightforward. Knowing how quickly uh, Ben, ben uh, has been playing, and he played Quella. It only took uh, just a little over 30 seconds, uh, maybe around 30 seconds on his clock, um, and he made that play. I'm not surprised to see XI come down quickly as well. Uh, it uncouples the eyes, it scores, and then it keeps uh, the, the bingo prone tiles. So um, not surprised at all that we're seeing um, XI come down fast. Um, and really, there, I didn't see any option that, that to, would have been any better. Um, you know, the, the possibilities are, are fairly limited, uh, but um, now, uh, you know, with Matthew having another uh, rack that looks like it's full of, um, you know, common tiles, um, he's perhaps thinking about um, something, um, so, some box words. I'm not sure if there's a word through OX that he could play, uh, but I think maybe uh, we might see something like uh, Bolt, or, or um, you no, know, he's, he's got a really nice play here. Sorry to cut you off. One bingo doesn't fit last born, but he has a double double through that W. It's tough to spot, but uh, Blawort, B L A W O R T, clearly the standout play for him here. It leaves the U exposed, which perhaps is not something he wants to do, but Blawort for 48 points holding an N, definitely his best play and one that he needs to spot. Very interesting. Uh, not an easy find. Um, you know, if you think of your word words, uh, he, I think he will eventually find this um, uh, if he spends the adequate time on it. Um, because, but I think, you know, um, intuitively you look through the U, you look at that X, uh, eventually he'll start looking at through that W and then I think he'll find this word. Yeah, other options available. He has Balloon, B-A-L-U-N, through the U. He has Butanol as well, each of those scoring 30 points. But Blawort for 48, absolutely the standout here. I expect him to take a little bit more time. You want to make absolutely sure you're not missing a bingo as you have floaters of U, P, uh, A, and E. Uh, he is going to miss it, Balloon instead coming down. Again, you don't think to double-double through a W very often, but an uncharacteristic miss for Matthew, who's played very solidly across the course of this tournament. And we switch back to Ben's rack as he has A-G-I-L-N-O-R, a very bingo-prone rack. He has the Collins only Rangoli as a playable bingo, making A-R, but I'm not seeing the possibility for any eights that he can play, uh, except 
Uh, yeah, no, nothing that I'm aware of. He's got, oh, paroling from the P actually is also a bingo. So bend to bingo back, and that was going to happen independent of Matthew's play. The paroling now scoring two additional points. So uh, so they've taken a little chance here to uh, to take a look at, uh, double check this word, and you'll get the nickel um, for balloon, and then, uh, then we'll see. I would imagine that paroling will be found by, by Ben uh, in no time. And um, that will place the I um, just below the double letter score. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see if Matthew is fortunate enough to, to draw some kind of big play in that corner. Um, but um, definitely with ROT on his rack, He's, you know, potentially hoping that that he could himself draw into some bingo tiles, and um, and have a response bingo. Yeah, so uh, Matthew pulling into his ORT, he's going to get ADDN. Not a lot of flexibility in one of those frustrating racks that, uh, you know, not going to be able to score a lot, not going to be able to keep super bingo prone. So Matthew will have an interesting turn as Benji does indeed find his highest scoring bingo paroling 78 points for him. And it's going to launch him into the lead as a Matthew has a rather frustrating rack to deal with. I'm not immediately seeing any good options for Matthew. Maybe he could play like dote. He could play DOAT in the top right corner. Um, it's about 31 points. Um, um, I think that, is sort of justifiable. Um, it would keep R and D on his rack. Um, this this rack normally bingos through an E, um, but that E is not in a spot that that he can use. So I think um, you know just trying to keep the game close, um, not being in a situation where you're you know overly dependent on on bingos. I think it would be better for him to just take the points and and keep going. Um, and I think that that's probably what will happen. Um, sooner uh, than later. Um, if he had drawn an E, though, it would have been uh, interesting if he had found Dane word after missing Blau word. So that would have that would have been a, a thought process that uh, might have might have made him realize, oh, I didn't see that earlier. Yeah, yeah, no, do DOAT, uh, I think clearly the standout play for him here. Nothing else makes a lot of sense. I think he'll take his time, look for bingos, again, recognize he doesn't have one. And uh, we'll move on from there. Ben with a crazy draw. You love to draw that blank in a championship game, but four E's and a V as well. Wow, we're not playing Pokemon, but it'd be great to play EV, E E V E E, uh, out of that. So uh, interesting, interesting. Well, he might end up playing Evo, E V O E, or he might play U to the W. Um, but I imagine Evo will be. Uh, reasonable play that will score just a little bit more um, and it plays in more than one spot so um, I wouldn't I, I would think that that would be the play unless he has a other word uh, that I'm not familiar with uh, with superior but uh, dote does come down so uh, actually now that I'm seeing the board uh, Eva will play um, or sorry V V E E um, could be a consideration as well forming one in age and div so uh, there there's some options. I kind of like Evo for the fact that it's giving dealing with one more vowel, but um, you got to kind of weigh that against uh, the, the the additional points. And um, um, I think for V, that looks like it would be um, a little, just enough more to maybe uh, um, absorb the fact that if you keep the additional vowel by playing V E or V O E, but I think it would probably choose V E. Yeah, one other option here is Keeve, K-E-E-V-E, -E -E, a nice way to play off three of those E's and score well as well. Uh, V-O-E or V-E-E -E at the top underneath paroling, both give back big counters for Matthews. He can just drop three tiles, make Diva or Dive, uh, or more points if he has an S on his rack. Uh, so that's one consideration, but not a huge one. Evo as well, forming OK and EW makes a lot of sense. But uh, I think Keeve, probably the best play here for Benji. 
Um, and we'll need to see if he's, uh, you know, I, that's a play I'm hesitant to make because I'm not 100% sure on the hooks. Does it just take an S or does it take more? Um, but I think just the standout play, and it looks like that's what he's looking at as well. Kiev going to score him 24 points, uh, unmuck this rack, and hold blank OE. One thing I'm looking at, if I'm Matthew, is Ben is nicely for us putting all of his letters up and down, but that blank is sideways. Uh, I wonder, you know, if he notices one tile is a little bit shorter than the rest. I'm not sure how tall this board is, if he could even see Ben's rack. But uh, Ben, I would, I would put that blank the right way. He's, he's going to crush the right play. Keeve, definitely, I think, the standout here. And we're turning back over to Matthew, who's got a very strange rack, D-E-M-M-N-R-V. Uh, so that's going to be tough. He's got to be happy to see these E's come out because that gives him significantly more uh, that he can do with his rack. Um, but still not a lot of solid options for him. Um, Bremen, Vendor, Nerved, Merman are options through those E's. He's got something like Voider if he wants to hold both of the M's. But I'm not seeing any standout. Maybe Madmen through the A. That'd be holding a V. But you're not going to be able to clean up this whole rack in just one move. Uh, MM, just fishing those two. D-E-N-R-V, also rather bingo prone. Um, and MM playing alongside Kiev. Lots to think about here. I wouldn't be surprised if Matthew spins a while. If he really wants to blow it all up, I think the best way to unload this rack two is Vommed, V-O-M-M-E-D, through the O in paroling, doesn't score well, but gets rid of all of this dreck as, at once. And with two unseen blanks to Matthew, maybe you do go digging for him. Uh, Sean, between M-M, Vommed, just Vom, Mad Men, uh, what are you thinking here? Well, I think this is arguably the toughest turn we've seen so far in this game. Um, so um, it, it, I don't know that there's a there's one right answer. Uh, I do like the option of playing Vomd and tur you know, turning over the tiles and and um, kind of throwing this bad stuff uh, away. I, I and that seems to be what he's selected. Um, I think you know sometimes when you see your tile rack and you think it's so disgusting, it makes you want to vom. So that's appropriate. Yeah, uh, we like this play. It does give back huge double-double opportunities with the right overlaps, but you can't play scared like that and, you know, be afraid of opening a double-double in a game where you're down. Just got to get that Drek off your rack, try to get back in bingo range as quick as you can. I like this idea for Matt, and it does open the board up in a way that, you know, maybe this board wasn't otherwise going to get opened up. So Ben now to respond as Matthew dealt with a bunch of consonants, Ben dealing with a bunch of vowels, D-E-E, I-O-U blank, can't be super excited to draw more vowels into his E-O blank leave. And as far as I see, there are no playable bingos for Ben on this turn. Uh, there were two potential eights if you got a B, R, or T as a floater, but those are not there. And now Ben going to be stuck deciding, do I make a play like video, try to get rid of some of these vowels? Do I play a little smaller with something like E-V-O-E -E through the V? Um, meowed from the M is another option, M-E-O-U-E-D. Uh, but Ben can't like all uh, those plays for the same reason. They, uh, they open this board in a game where he's ahead and he has the blank. He's up by 26 points and it's his turn. Don't want to open the board. I think Meowed, M-E-O-U-E-D, has to be the play to make here. Um, but I am not totally sure if I'm missing a good option. Maybe O-X. I kind of like dumping, R -E, uh, dumping the E-I to form R-E-I and Oxum. Um, it uh, scores, I believe, uh, 22 or something like that. I could be doing my math wrong. 22. But, but I, I, it's a little bit of a... A squeezing play and he's choosing lewd um i don't like me lewd better than meowed um so so this one i i'm i'm not sure if if you feel that this is uh, you know a, a play that's similar to that but to me if you're going to if you're going to be giving up the ed um then you may as well uh, playing on that side then you may as well keep keep going and uh i don't think that the hanging the d up in the top uh, right corner is dangerous enough to to worry about that uh, when you can unload two more vowels. So um, how do you feel about that, Matthew? 
if nothing else, I, I would spend more time there. I, I still prefer Meow. I've been doing a good job knocking out the double-double. That's the last thing you want to allow Matthew to do in this situation with your lead, with your advantage in this game. Um, but I, if nothing else, Ben, I think you need to spend a little bit more time on that turn. It's a big deciding turn in the game. Uh, he is going to end up drawing very well into his EIO blank leave this time with CFS. And Matthew has A-E-N-N-R-S-W. A wanner is good, W-A-N-N-E-R, but it is an adjective. It extends to wanest. There is no wanners, and there are no playable bingos for Matthew on this turn. So he'll have to make a decision. Do I, is wanners good? Even if it's not good, do I think I can sneak it by Ben? Um, he's, you see he set up swanner as well. I think he's talking himself out of both of these words. Um, and if he's well, not, we just to... heard from Matt, Matthew that you know he's unsure of Colin's words, and and this is a tough thing where you see you've learned a word as one, knowing that it's an adjective, the comparison of wanner and wanest, but then you have to ask yourself, wait, when did I learn that? Did I learn that before I started playing Collins? And did I specifically relearn that word when I started studying Collins? And in his case, as he said, since the pandemic that I know for sure whether or not uh, it has a, yeah, that water could be in, and maybe a noun in, in, in uh, this other lexicon. So that definitely creates a problem uh, from your level of certainty. Um, you know, I don't think that he'll take a chance to, to uh, take a chance on it. Um, I think he's more likely to try to dump a W N and, and try again. Um, you know, he doesn't have a great way to play that WN to score a lot of points. He can score, you know, um, uh, somewhere between 12 and, and 15 points or something with short plays, I think. Um, but uh, it's definitely a not uh, an optimal situation for him right now. Uh, the deficit that he's behind is not that much, though. So I think if he thinks he can play short and draw into a bingo the next turn, that's probably where he'd want to go. Um, however, um, it's most likely the case where... Um, um, ben will have a bingo in the next turn, and that'll become a, a challenge. Yeah, so Matthew, again, the decision, do I play long, do I play short, do I score now, do I try to score more later? So he's got just W-A-N through the A and up Rudel, holding the very bingo-prone A-E-N-R-S, but scoring just 13 right now. He has Answer and Keeves, which will open this board up, but play off almost all of his bingo tiles. That scores 33 or he can split the difference with a play like Bon, which is what he's doing. Score a little bit more now, 18 instead of 13, uh, at the expense of slightly destabilizing his leave. Now, looking at the tracking is very important for Matthew here. There are seven unseen I's, five unseen E's, three unseen A's, four unseen O's. So one of those eight, or one of those seven I's uh, will definitely help him out of this situation. Um, and we'll see if he's able to pull that and pull a bingo here. Um, but Bond kind of split the difference, score a little bit now, and try to score again next turn. Although I don't think that that draw is what he wanted. And Ben, with a, a bunch of gifts on his rack, one might even say he has an eco gift on his rack, as eco gifts plays along the six row, forming F X I S. It'll triple the C. It'll triple the F. It's a very nice play. Uh, thank you for pointing that out in chat, Alex Seaholm. And uh, we'll see if he's if he sees that play and if he does see it, if he actually wants to play it, as it slots an E in a triple-triple in a game where he's pulling ahead by 110. Uh, maybe we don't want to do that. Maybe, oh, he's, not, he's choosing not to bingo at all. Um, and I think he only had two bingos in that rack, offices and quaff, C-O-I-F-F-E-S. Uh, neither one of those plays. So actually, Eco Gifts is the only playable bingo that Ben had, according to Quackle. And he either misses it, bypasses it, or or one of those. But I think that's a turn that Ben rushes for sure. I know that he has all of Matthew's uh, you know, thought process to try to alphagram that rack and find stuff. But he did miss one. And with 17 minutes and 45 seconds on your clock, uh, I don't know that that's what you want to do. So Matthew with the miss of Blawwort earlier, Ben with the probable miss of Eco Gifts now, although funnily enough, he's basically drawn it again or very close to it. Um, tough spot. Probably don't even look through that T in most cases. And we'll switch over to Matthew now. E-E-N-O-R-R-S. 
you know, he tried to split the difference, be a little bit more aggressive and played off the A, thinking he can probably draw another bingo. And uh, he did actually get one over Renz, O-V-E-R-R-E-N-S, does play through the V. We've seen a little bit of shakiness on Colin's words before. So Matthew, I bet, spends a little bit more time and verifies to himself, yeah, that is good, right? I'm not thinking of anything else. Um, but over Renz, I believe the one playable bingo that Matthew has, once we get this put into Quackle, I can get you a definitive answer. But I almost certainly expect him to see this. A player of his caliber shouldn't be missing a bingo like that. He's just going to take his time, make sure there's nothing else, make sure he's sure that's a word. And over Renz going to come down as Ben probably to bingo back after that. One unseen blank, so if Matthew pulls it after this bingo, uh, it's still certainly anybody's game. But Ben with a 60-point lead and a bingo on board, um, we'll see. The next draw for Matthew is crucial. Matthew is playing over Renz here. Uh, he's, oh no, oh no. Matthew just plays over and hits his clock, holding R-E-N-S. Huge bingo miss for Matthew here. Oh goodness. Um, and now we switch over to Ben. Matthew is going to bingo next turn with something like reusing, but you need to hit the bingo now. Ooh, ooh, tough, tough miss and a big high stakes game for Matthew. And now Ben back on board. Uh, he's got to make a decision. What is my most defensive versus highest scoring bingo? Do I play something down from the A like Aconites? Do I try to knock out that front hook on cover, the back hook on Keeve? Do I score as much as I can right now? Or do I try to shape this board? Maybe a play with up Rudels. It likes to, uh, you know, I'm not maybe a bingo that starts with an S and makes up Rudels. Lots of stuff to think about. And even the potential for 11s from over, that would be incredible. A huge flex on stream in the championship game is something there. So Ben's got a lot to think about. I can't imagine he doesn't spend a good amount of time on this turn. Looks like the highest scoring bingo is Echoist, E-C-H-O-I-S-T, forming Hover. That's really tough to spot, but is going to triple the, the C. However, it opens a triple-triple line and another bingo line. And uh, with the leave he has, I think that's a crazy play. You've got to play something a little bit more defensive. Perhaps a play like Cestoid and Keeves is available. Uh, Quackle letting us know that there are no sick over words or cover words. But if I'm Ben, I certainly look for the flair on stream in this situation. Uh, so lots for Ben to think about. I'm not sure what the right answer is. And this is more one of those situations where, you know, what, what am I comfortable playing? What am I comfortable giving my opponent? So it looks like Ben has opted to play Coziest, C-O-S-I-E-S-T. Um, not a bad decision as well. It addresses a lot of the big point or big spots on this board. And Ben, after Matt's big bingo miss, is going to jump further ahead. We know Matthew will bingo back with reusing or something similar to that, but uh, Ben now up over 100 points and Matthew to have just a low scoring bingo back, if I'm seeing correct. Whoa. Yeah, it's quite a, quite a turn of events in this last few turns. I mean, Eco Gifts was a potentially harder find, um, um, in, but partly because of the placement, it's also maybe not a word that comes up every day. Um, but you know, you, you could feel that that rack had a number of things. So, uh, maybe to keep looking, um, you know, and then, um, here with, uh, the, the following play with over Renz seems to be maybe just, a uh, a gap from somebody who hasn't played Collins that long. So that's, that's understandable, but, uh, definitely a couple of, of, of unforced errors, you could say that, that said, um, you know, they're both still getting uh, bingos down in the following turn. So it's almost like that error has corrected itself. And uh, now Matthew's chosen Signier, um, which is a really uh, big score uh, because he's pluralizing up brutal um, and uh, seems to be, yeah, he's committed his play and that's that's the one that's come down. So, um, you know, even though they, they may have made this, these little misses, I think it's nice that, um, you know, neither one player was punished too severely for that. They, they each kind of move on from that to get their bingos down. 
So two interesting things here now for Ben. It looks like they've paused the clock to confirm the score. Uh, I don't think this is a challenge. I think they're just trying to make sure their numbers are all correct. Uh, one for Benji. He has Suris now, the second game we've seen this come up, T-Z-U-R-I-S, through the U. Tough to spot that word, but it'll score a good amount of points. The other thing, all these different spellings of senor, signor, it seems very arbitrary which ones do and don't take S's. Ben has two S's now. Uh, will he try the hook? It is invalid, um, but will he try it? Maybe Matthew is trying to bait him. Maybe Matthew just trying to do his highest scoring bingo. But that's a big thing yet to come. Ben is going to crush that spot. Zuri's is going to put him back up by about 110. Though Matthew drawn QI with a great place to crush that Q. It's going to leave him with the very unstable ABGHH as a leave. But when you can score that much with your Q, you almost need to. Matthew probably going to see if he can uh, set up his, his Q elsewhere. If he's got a big like hover play uh, that maybe retains the Q, I don't expect that Suriz spot to go away if he can hold QI and score a lot right now. But uh, yeah, he'll take his time on this turn. Very important that he's able to score now and maybe try to get himself in bingo range shortly. Uh, he does have a high, A-H-I-G-A, uh, which is playable uh, with hover. That doesn't quite set up the queue, but it does open the board up quite a bit. Um, but I think QI definitely, you know, just the amount of points he can score there has got to be his right thing to do. So that's what he's going to do. Hits his clock, puts it back on Ben. A-D-F-I-P-S-T is Ben's rack. So not the most balanced uh, but does have something like Zaps from the Z to score a lot of points again this turn, though it does float an S out for Matthew. Sean, do you see any short words from the Z that don't burn Ben's S? No, I think that that's uh, going to be it. But, um, you know, like he's holding on to the F, so potentially on a later turn he could play below Coziest. Um, so I think I think in terms of being able to score um, and the use, the potential usefulness of the S is limited right now. Um, yes, it's a generally good bingo tile, but in terms of pluralizing things, there's not, there's not that much to do here. So, uh, I don't think it's too, too big a deal and he can kind of keep, uh, keep the pressure on Matthew with the scoring, um, uh, being, being so, uh, continuous. I know after you bingo with Seigneur, if your opponent then scores with the Z and then uses it again to score twice, they've kind of neutralized your bingo and then some with these two non-bingo plays. Uh, so, you know, it really, really puts you in a tough spot because it takes a lot of work to get to that bingo and then it's not, um, it doesn't, in terms of pay, paying off uh, from, a, from a point perspective, uh, you feel like, hey, I'm still in this big hole. Why is that? <laughs> so. Um, it's it's challenging now, and now he's got the plays with the H's. He didn't really draw anything too synergistic. He's picked up the J, which then gives him, um, you know, words like Hudge, which he may have to play, but it uh, looks like he might play Hen and Hudge or Ish and Hudge, but I, I would think it would be Hen and Hudge. But, um, you know, that, that just means that the board, um, again, will, will not necessarily – be, be expanding in terms of opportunities. Uh, and that is not good news for Matthew, who is still trying to get to a point where um, he can re rebalance his rack. And it's going to take him maybe probably two or three turns to to get to a point where, where he can do that. And meanwhile, Ben will score a bit and be able to um, uh, you know, try to set himself up again for, for another bingo. Yeah, so unseen to Matthew are three eyes. So he could make a play like H-A-J and H-I-S, uh, setting up an eye hook that he doesn't have. But the odds that Ben does have an eye after his last string of plays is extremely high. So maybe Matthew needs the volatility down 100 points, or he can make a more conservative play, Hodge, in that spot that he's chosen, or with H-E-N next to F-O-E. Um, both of those are reasonable options as well. So Matthew, I think, holding the vowel, not many vowels left for him to pull, and he's just got to hope he picks up that blank and is able to do something with it. He's going to miss it again, and you can almost see from his posture his chances in this game are slipping away. We know Ben does not have the blank, 
but uh, he doesn't know that. In this situation, he has to play as if Ben doesn't because it's game over if he does, and there's no point playing for spread right now. You've got to try to win $10,000 if, if you can at all. Ben uh, did not pull what he hoped to after zaps. He also had Z-A-T-I in that same spot, six fewer points, um, but Z-A-T-I held four consonants, and he did draw three more. So whether he missed or chose to play zaps for points or tactical purposes, it now looks like a huge decision that he did because seven consonants is not ever where you want to end up when you're nursing a lead and trying to stop your opponent from catching back up into this game. So bad draw, but it could have been a lot worse. Ben, I think, just going to try to score as much as he can. He'll play drift. It opens a spot for Matthew to potentially bingo on a triple word with the right overlaps, but it scores so well that he'll likely survive that bingo anyway. Unclutters a nasty rack and fishes for that blank in the bag. Um, unseen to Ben are 10, or 17 unseen tiles, 10 in the bag. So uh, even if Matthew does bingo after drift, Matthew's not going to be able to bingo a second time. This is looking very close to game over unless Matt's able to come up with a very clever play to get back into this game. It's going to take a miracle, but I bet he sets up a way to try to make a miracle happen here. Uh, maybe some kind of overlap. Got to set up a lane where he can find, uh, draw a high-scoring bingo. And Ben, a big sigh of relief as he does draw that blank. It's going to be very challenging for Matthew to bingo on him now. Ben, you can see, uh, probably covering a grin on his face as he knows He's more or less won this tournament and $10,000 at the World Cup. Matthew, uh, going to go down swinging, though. He's got to assume here that he draws the blank. I'll give you all the unseen pool. To, there are five in the bag right now. Blank C-E-E-I-I-N-N-T-U-Y-Y. -E -E -I -I so I think after a five-tile play like Drift, Matthew has to hope on the 50-50 chance that Ben left the blank as one of the five in the bag and did not draw it as one of the five he just drew. We know, of course, that's not true, but Matthew got to do everything he can. Look for bingos that he can draw. Hope that Ben has U-Y-Y-I or something in that vein. Of course, we know this is essentially decided, but Matthew going to use probably the rest of his clock trying to find ways to bingo here. He can't just make a play like G-O-A-L alongside Drift and Rollover. He'll go down swinging if I know anything about it. If he plays something it. like H-A-O, uh, sorry, H-O-A, then you know, in a, under Coziest, he could play that really aggressively. Um, you know, it's three tiles. You may be able to draw something. Uh, it's just not going to work. I mean, I don't think that, um, I think I think that it gives Ben lots, Ben has lots of options in terms of, uh, ways to come back. But from Matthew's vantage point, um, you know, maybe if he turns over enough tiles, he could pull up, pull into something, um, you know, fortunate. Um, and uh, that that's the thing is really like, how do you, how do you give yourself some kind of chance, some kind of shot? Um, you know, it might be something unlikely, but you want to kind of give, give yourself enough opportunity to go from having a rack, which is not very bingo prone, to to one that he's kind of lined up HOA here, so he's considering that possibility. Um, but you fork the board, you create this stress that hey, if my opponent does somehow hit a bingo, will they catch up? And then comes the math game. Well, the one thing about playing HOA is that at least the score in of itself for this play would be uh, 12, 34, 20, 31 points. So let's just say yeah, I could stay maybe in range if I'm able to bingo out and. Um, the range is also very important because you can't just say, oh, okay, I'm going to play whatever will get me into a bingo, but meanwhile fall so far behind that a bingo won't even win. And that's that's a, a consideration that's often missed by players is that, you know, maybe you go for something that is a, has statistically less of a chance of bingoing, but at least keeps you in the, in, in the mathematically in the game. And that is, is something very important of consideration for Matthew. Um, the flexibility that this blank provides means that it's going to be really hard for anything to happen that, that Ben can't, um, you know, uh, overcome. 
Yeah, HOA seems like what he's thinking about here. The problem is with those two unseen Ys, even a play like YIN from Benji will score so well that I'm not sure a bingo back from Matthew will be enough to win the game. He's probably doing exactly this math in his head right now. What bingos could I actually draw? What would Bend end up with left on his rack? And uh, probably deciding, you know what, a yin, yin is going to kill me here. So he's going to play low ta instead. Uh, try to bingo to that H, overlapping drift down from the B or down from the S in zaps. He needs to score now, not let Ben score, and to try to get back into this game. Ben did have a bingo on his rack. Tenuity played uh, with S T and T E. And uh, HOA would have given back tenuity for significantly more points. Um, so it works out in this instance, but Matthew has to know now without drawing the blank, you see him pursing his lips, uh, this game is done and he will not be bringing home his second major championship and $10,000. Instead, Ben Schoenbrunn going to be our CSW division championship. Uh, he has a bingo as well. So can he go out in style and play antiki? making the blank a Q from the A that Matthew strung out. Will he go out in style or will he just make this turn quickly and ensure the victory? We'll find out shortly, but I think in either case with the garbage that Matt has and unseen to Benji, A, B, C, E, G, I, N, Y, just one in the bag. Um, Gynesia, potentially unseen, but no spot for it. I'm not seeing any other bingos in that rack unless there's a Collins only one. Uh, Antiki certain to win this game. Uh, ben will miss it. He'll play Unity instead, but at this point it doesn't matter. No, Untidy instead, it has more points. So Ben missing Antiki. We've seen several misses in this game, but cannot emphasize enough how hard it is to play on stream. So Ben Untidy, uh, gonna win the game for him. While we're here, please like this video, subscribe to Let's Play Scrabble on YouTube. If you like watching Scrabble, there will be plenty of it on this channel. Josh Greenway doing some great work. Uh, Sean as well, doing everything he can to bring uh, Scrabble to y'all. Gotta give a lot of thanks to everybody involved in putting this tournament together. Uh, Josh Greenway, Kieran O'Connor, directors, uh, Word Game Players Organization, and Linda Finn doing a lot of the brain work. Seth Lipkin and Crosstables.com for hosting the entrance list and making everybody's lives easier. Noah Slatkoff, I cannot say enough back uh, nice things on the back end, has been running Quackle for us and keeping our scores updated. Uh, so a thankless job, no FaceTime and all the work. I've been rotating on and off. Uh, Sean has been here all day, every day, running the stream and finally moving over to commentary. Josh Greenway now behind the scenes, putting this all together. Annette Tedesco and her legacy living on uh, in this big tournament. Uh, she hosted July 4th tournaments for years and years in Albany, got us this venue and a great relationship with them. Um, so just so many people, it takes a village to put this stuff together. And of course, everybody here on the stream watching us, we wouldn't be streaming unless we had people like y'all keeping us entertained in the chat and, uh, you know, watching this. So thanks to everybody for putting together what was an awesome event, Word Cup in Albany, New York, 2023. We will have another Word Cup next year. 2024's Word Cup has been announced to be in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So bring your shorts and short sleeves. It's gonna be hot, but the desert in the summer is absolutely beautiful and the mountains in Albuquerque beautiful as well. Get your name on that entrance list early. Block off your calendars. I believe it's in July. And uh, yeah, lots of stuff going on. Lots of Scrabble. Like and subscribe to this channel. Check out wordgameplayers.org uh, to find more tournaments in your area or cross-tables.com to find information about these players and other upcoming tournaments as well. Sean, do you have any other words? Did I miss anybody? Uh, well, I'll give a shout out to my wife. She was... Uh... Miriam was uh, behind the scenes in the, uh, a lot of the, the registration pieces. There's a lot of many people who have uh, contributed to this event, uh, to this uh, to this tournament scene that we have. Um, so I'm, I'm appreciative of everybody who has been involved, uh, the great hospitality provided by the city of Albany, 
uh, by uh, the uh, folks here at this host venue, uh, the Marriott. So, so certainly um, uh, a great collaborative effort all, all around. Um, you know, I, I thank all the players who came out, uh, some of them who didn't know what to expect and uh, decided, you know, hey, I'm going to try this. I'm going to, I'm going to come out. And the folks like um, ourselves who uh, made the the trip from some distance. Uh, some people came from great distances. Some people came from across the water. Uh, those people, I really want to appreciate them as well. So um, now, now we've got Beachy coming down to unload these tiles. Uh, maybe that's the way that the rest of the summer can be spent by these guys once they uh, cash in their their prize checks for first and second. Um, I think uh, it's going to be uh, you know worthwhile and and um, you know there's more more Scrabble to be played. Uh, there will be you know, this, uh, Matthew will will go on to uh, battle in another in another day for uh, you know another event. So uh, really. Uh, tremendous uh, performances by them. Uh, so, so congratulations to our, our World Cup Collins champion, Ben Schoenbrunn, uh, first time champion, uh, but probably not the last time. Well done. Yeah, yeah, well done for Ben. I'm sure we'll get him back here for an interview as soon as he's able to, you know, gather his composure, catch his breath. You know, I'd be grinning ear to ear. My first major championship, $10,000 in my pocket. Ben's got to be on cloud nine right now, and deservedly so. You've got to play very well across the course of a tournament in a field with absolutely killer players. Uh, Adam Logan, Will Anderson, Matthew, uh, Tunnicliffe, Matthew O'Connor, both Reinke twins, to come on top after 31 games for all of that. Big, big congrats to Ben and congrats to Matthew Tunnicliffe as well. Gave us some great games on stream. Second place certainly ain't shabby and $3,500, I believe, is the prize fund uh, for him.